I'm here tonight with um, Spade and um, Big Star from Richmond, mm -hmm. from Richmond, Virginia. So, how's the weather there tonight? Um, it's cool, like, you know, a little spring breeze. Hey, it's not, like, hot or too cold. It's nice spring weather out here. It's uh, windy here tonight. It's cold, enough, it's cold enough for Spade to wear that skull cap and, and short sleeve shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a ball in. Hey, man. I just don't want to say it, man. Okay. Um, what's the nearest bank in Virginia? What's in your background that makes your music unique? You want to start that, Spade? I'm DJ for numerous. Uh, people's, people in the, in the, um, in the industry. I wasn't their personal DJ. I was for Just Ice, but for Chub Rock and different people, I did like one nighters. But I was basically a, a, a DJ until I, I'm from Queens, New York, Far Rockaway, and I moved to Virginia. And once I came here, I had basically stopped. Then I got back into DJ and, and, it's like when I when I when I was into it since 1978, back in the old back when it was just regular uh, disco, and I've been in it so long till when it came time to stop. I needed therapy. I couldn't just stop. So when I came to Virginia, I didn't want to start again because I was nervous that it took me so much to get away from it that I didn't want to get back in it. But you know, when something is a part of your life, you don't have a uh, a choice. So, here I am. I'm, I'm back. And, you know, I, I hope you never stop. You know, I, I had a birthday party years and years ago. And I'm eating, and I hear this guy rapping. And my friend, uh, his name is C. Styles, he was like, yo, man, uh, no, I called him, and I said, yo, man, that guy came in here with you. Who is that? He said, that's the dude I was telling you about, Big Style. And, you know, from hearing people tell you about other people, they're always going to make it bigger than what it is. And so, I, I, you know, I wasn't expecting what I heard. And when I heard him, I was like, yo, I need to know that guy. I, I need to know him. But, you know, he was he, he, he was Big Style, but he was small back then, you know? <laughs> I go oh, don't, don't, don't go there with it. Don't, don't say it. Go ahead, because you're going to say it's someone else him. anyway. You might as well I say met my next guy, and, and we, did, we worked together for a while, but then he told me he was moving to New York, and I thought he was just talking, and then one day, it was no more stop. So then, one day, I opened up the, the, the blaze of Quincy Jones. He had uh, 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 he had the, the uh, vibe, and he also had Blaze magazine. So... Somebody was telling me, yo, it's a rapper from Virginia. Everybody in New York is after him. He's all in the magazines and stuff. So I went and bought a Blaze magazine. And when I opened it up and saw a style, I was like, oh, my God, style, get out of here. But I knew he had the potential, but I didn't think that's what I was going to see. So when I saw it, I reached out to his manager. I reached out to a lot of people. I couldn't get in touch with him. They telling me, yo, he all over the place. He in, he in Cali one day, the next day, in Minnesota. He, you know, he all over the place. So when we finally linked up, I went and put some crazy glue on my head and stuck it to the back of his neck. I said, anywhere you go from now on, <laughs> and, and, yes. and, 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 and here we are today. Here we are. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, was, hey, that, was, that was a perfect summary. I, I don't know. I can't add too much more to that. That was, that was perfect. <laughs> I mean, you know, real Your music musical man. background. My musical background? Um, yeah. Got a good guy get up to my pops. Um, started every Sunday morning. We would go. We my parents are from North Carolina, so I live in Richmond, Virginia. Every Sunday morning, we had to go to North Carolina to church. And on that drive, my pops would play everything from Otis Redden to Joe Tex to Wilson Pickett to Percy Sledge, all of that. So I had an hour and a half, two hour drive to listen and absorb and soak all that in. And I didn't know how much that would affect me at, you know, four or five years old until, you know, I got older and then hip hop came. And I tried to do other stuff. I tried to uh, play instruments and stuff like that. But 
I'm tone deaf, so I can play what's on the sheet, but I can't like play it outside of that. You know what I mean? I couldn't tell you what the notes were outside of that. So it was frustrating, so I stopped trying to play the instrument, and then when rap came along, you know, it was like, it was easy to me. It came easy to me, so it was just, you know, another form of, to, of expression. So I got good at it, and I wanted to get better. I wanted to be, you know, back then it was all about respect. So it wasn't about money and fame and none of that. You wanted to be respected as a lyricist, as an MC. And so I just wanted to get better and better so that my name would be mentioned when you talk about dope rappers and great MCs and stuff like that. And I just stayed at it. And, you know, like Space said, though, when you, you know, I tried to quit before, but when something's a part of you is, is you know, when you love something, you know, you can't just quit it. You know what I mean? It's, you know, anytime a dope beat come on, you gotta, you gotta spit something. You know what I mean? So I just, you know, just do it for the love of it. And me and Spade, we just do it because we love it. And we share it with people, and then people like it, and that's great. You know what I mean? But the love comes first, you know? That's first and foremost. I got to love it first before I expect anybody else to. Right. Okay. Uh, what does your music aim to say? Am I taking this one there? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, well, for me, and I, I, I guess I can speak for Spade too, man. We both have a street background as well, you know. Uh, and when I was back in the day, when I when I had my record deal and I was uh, I was blowing up, uh, I rapped about what I was living. I was in the streets and I talked about it, you know, unapologetically. And, um, but you get to a point in your life when you go through things and you realize that, you know, how much music can influence people and, and minds and spirits. And you get to a point where you, you know, you feel like it was kind of perpetuating the cycle, you know what I mean? Uh, of a, a destructive cycle, you know, that we go through in the hood. So I just got to a point where I got tired and I wanted to do something different. You know what I mean? I wanted to uplift, motivate people in more of a positive way. So for the last three years, everything I've done has been more conscious, more motivational, more inspiring, more uplifting. You know what I mean? Uh, you never hear me curse in the record. You never hear me use the N-word. You never hear me use misogynist terms or things like that. You know, if it's not trying to motivate people in a positive way, then I can't do it. You know, and it's a way to make good music without having to do that. You know, and I think you got a system now that kind of teaches these young boys that the only way you can make a hit record is to do all of the negative stuff. You know what I mean? And we want to show people that, hey, you can make a high record that's respected uh, in the streets and in the clubs without even talking about anything negative. You know? Yeah, now, now it's more more about sex and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, you know, as an artist, I'm all about artistic expression and stuff like that. And I think there's a place for everything. But I think right now we're in a point where it's just one particular narrative being pushed. There's no balance. So, you know, all you're hearing is what you just said, you know, sex... Either sex is either murder or glorifying money, glorifying hustling and, and selling drugs and using drugs. You know what I mean? And that's the only thing you hear. You don't hear anything positive on the radio at this point when it comes to hip hop radio. You know what I mean? There are no Fuji's and Bill <laughs> Smith's. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, who shows some biggest um, influences? I'll let you go, Spade. What was the question? Um, who shows some um, biggest influences? My biggest influence was my mother. 
I watch, you know, the, the thing with my mother is when I was a kid, I watched how my mother would make us. You mean musical influence or influence too? Um, well, m music or family or. Well, I guess she she was both because my mother my mother wasn't a singer, but you know people who sing what they play. <laughs> So my mother would be around. She the one got me interested in music. My mother played a lot of gospel music, a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So we knew the words. So on Saturday mornings, we cleaned up to gospel music. Yes. We had to clean up. We had to clean up to gospel yes, music. Yes, yes, yes. So I think every black household. My mother, <laughs> my mother bought a stereo, a new, a new, a new stereo. Went because we had the all in one, the TV and the stereo all in one big box. So when she when the, when the, when the stereos came out with the speaker separate, she bought us a little stereo and she bought us a couple of records. And I had a guy that lived on the third floor. His name was Jimmy Broxton. His family had a stereo that would shake the whole building, hmm. and it amazed me how his mother allowed him to play it that loud. You know, and I'm like, why you play his music that loud? So I used to take my little speakers and put them in the window. And turn it up because this this was so loud you could hear it out the window. Wow. So I kind of I kind of started loving music at that point, and that that told me that music was 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 for me because I would get in trouble and my mother would tell me don't do it again. And as soon as she left, I put the speakers back in the window. <laughs> so and and and, I, and and me DJing at a young age. I used to have to be home by 12. And my wife, Barbara, was younger than me, but she could stay out late. So I taught her how to DJ so that I can go home, get in the bed, play sleep, till my mother went to sleep, sneak back out and go back to the bar. So, so after getting in trouble so much, I realized that to me, I didn't even care. Music had me so, I, I love music so much that I didn't care what came along with it long as I can do music. And, 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 and she was, my mother was my influence, but all she did was connect me to what I always had. Right. Right.